Greetings, fellow Saiyans, Digi Destin, Tamers, and other life forms. Welcome back to Saint TCG. And I'm making this video. I, it's been like a couple weeks now since I went, but I did go to a, a second pre release event for uh, the next adventure set. And yeah, uh, I haven't, I didn't make the video. <laughs> And I, I mean, I debated on whether or not I even wanted to, but, eh, we'll go ahead. Just, you know, some more content. Uh, I'll say this, my second one, I wouldn't say it got, like, too good. Like, I didn't pull anything crazy like my first pre-release where I got the secret rare. Um, uh, mostly, I was just able to pull... The Phoenix Man uh, campaign and a Dorogoromon, Dor which I mean, now he's kind of like four bucks now, so it's kind of better than when I pulled him because I think he was like a dollar or two, so he's kind of gone up. Then for my uh, pre release uh, packs that I got for attending, I ended up getting. Um, I think I only got one. Yeah. Yeah, I think I only got one of them. So, yeah, it was a uh, ancient Megatherium on. I couldn't remember if I got this as a second one or if this was from another thing. Because I have two of these. I, I can't actually remember when. So, either I got it with this or I only got that one. But speaking of pre-releases, I actually uh, ended up picking up one of these only because I love the art on the card. Like Bandai, <laughs> if you somehow see this video, can we get that as a playmat? <laughs> like that would be sick as a playmat for the card game. Just with all the Ancients and Agunimon right there. I would buy that if that was a playmat. <laughs> also... Can we please stop getting playmats through Bandai Premium and actually get playmats like at retail shops or like through your local card shops? I think that would be better than uh, the Bandai Premium where you have to wait like months just to get it after you order it. Like you're kind of tying up and they're not like cheap. They're like 30 something bucks. For a play mat, and then you have to wait to get it. <laughs> like I wish that I wish they would kind of do like they do with with Dragon Ball, where they have Ultra Pro make play mats for them. If they could get Ultra Pro to start making play mats to sell, and if they would get this artwork, I would so buy that one. Uh, but again, uh, well. After that, but getting back to the uh, pre-release, uh, I'll just go over the deck that I had. I didn't get as lucky as in my first run. In the first one where I got a bunch of Digitama and a bunch of Tamers. This time I only got three. For that this event, I only got three Digi Eggs. Which kind of sucked because, I mean, you kind of need them to be able to get some draw power when you get stuck so that kind of sucked plus it's good to have like a digimon in the back in the raising area so that you can build it up so that it won't get killed to try to swing as try to get one of your bigger digimon to play the swing but then uh yeah, I, I didn't get so lucky with Tamers. I actually got, um, I had three Tamers. I had JP, uh, the Coda, which, I mean, obviously is the best one because it was the only memory Tamer. And then I also had a Koji, but I actually, uh, put him in, uh, my Lobomon deck that I'm building. Or that I have built. But yeah, I was only able to get three Tamers, again... <laughs> Kind of sucks. Um, you're not 
you're not able to go off with like did you uh spirit evolving into other stuff so like i tried to kind of I tried to, I, I still went for, like, spirit evolutions, but, like, obviously you can't evolve uh, another color tamer, even in pre-release rules where evolution is different. Like, the ones that have specified, like, it needs to evolve over a, a, a specific card or a, a specific color. That doesn't get around the pre-release rules, because, like, in a pre-release, you could digivolve a green egg, or a red Digimon on a green egg, and it it's fine. But if it said that it had to digivolve over a red Digitama, then you wouldn't be able to digivolve any other card over it. So that was kind of the part that sucked. <laughs> I was also very unlucky with getting... Uh, I didn't get enough level 3s either. So I ended up getting uh, the Lopmon. The, uh, the Darumon. And then I got uh, Bokemon, Neemon, just because it's good for uh, hybrid decks. I had the Ghostmon. I had uh, Pulsemon. Uh, Huckmon. We had Toyagumon. And we had Gatsumon. Then for level fours, I had Kendogurumon, uh, Kumamon, Beetlemon, Metal Kabuterimon. So I only had three, two green uh, hybrids, which kind of sucks because since we have the JP, it would have been pretty good to evolve him over the JP since he gives it where you did evolve into Beetlemon over JP. He costs one cost, and then the Beetlemon also searches uh, for other hybrids off the evolution. So that was mainly why I kind of was using it, because it helps search your other uh, um, hybrid pieces from the deck. I had a Kaiser Leomon, and then I had a Gigasmon only because he was a good blocker option. Then we uh, I was able to pull two Eismon scatter modes, and then two Eismon, so I had to play it because you don't know if you, uh, if you play a card that discards a card, and you discard the Eismon. You can play scatter mode from your trash, which is not bad. Then I had Dorugamon only because uh, I had the uh, the Dorumon because uh, if you digivolve the Dorumon on top of the the or the Dorugamon on top of the Dorumon, he gains blocker, so it's just another blocker for the deck. And then I had two of these. I had Shellmon and Tuskmon only because they were four cost, so they were kind of cheap, but they are four and five K. And then uh, the Tuskmon has one Digivolving. He could also give one of your Digimon 2000. So there was that. For level fives, I had uh, Mame Tyrannomon. He has an effect where you reveal the top three and you can digivolve into a green level six card, which my level sixes were both green. <laughs> so, yeah, just in case if I had that, but I, I never used it. I had Rhino Kabuterimon just because going along with the JP thing, you could get up to Rhino Kabuterimon uh, because he reduces the cost by two. To Digivolve, if you have a Digimon with a Tamer in its uh, traits, or in its evolution. And we had a Goonimon uh, for his effect, where if this Digimon has a a Tamer in its Digivolution, you could reduce the Digivolution by two. And since it's, uh, since the event, Digivolving a Digimon over another Digimon of a different color doesn't matter so I could go Beetlemon into Aldemon 
and then Alderman's effect would go into place where he gains um, 4,000, so he would become a 12k. If I just used him to to swing over things if I needed to. Then we had Beowulf Mon, same thing. He If he digivolves over a Digimon with a Tamer, he becomes cheaper, and then his effect is you can, um, let me see, um, you can return one card in this Digimon's Digivolution to put back a level 4 from your, uh, uh one of your opponent's level 4 Digimon back to their hand, so it just helps get stuff off the board. Then we had Diapermon. Uh, again, or no, he doesn't have the, the effect where he becomes cheaper, but he has an effect where when you Digivolve your for every uh, dig, your Digimon your opponent has that has no evolution or uh, Digivolution cards, he you get to draw one. So since it was a pre-release, a lot of people do like hard play cards. So I was able to get his draw one effect a couple of times. And then his other effect basically works against Rookie Rush, where as long as you have a card with hybrid in its traits, in this card's trait, or uh, Digi Illusion stack, none of your opponent's level 3 Digimon could attack you. And then I had Waymon just for the uh, chance that you could play him and then... Play one of your level 3s from the bottom of one of your Digimon as another Digimon, but I never used that. <laughs> I just had it just in case. And then my two level 6s for the event were Saber Leomons. Just because um, when Digivolving, he gains 5,000. Yeah, so he gains 5,000, so he becomes a 15. And then when he gets deleted... If he dies, you gain two memory. So, yeah. And then I had some option cards. Of course, I pulled uh, Gigastorm. So, I played Gigastorm. It was pretty good. You could delete two of your opponent's Digimon with 8,000 DP or less. I played another Fire Drake Strike since I was playing hybrid cards. And yes, I, I did make sure that I was actually using it on a card that does have hybrid. I, I learned my lesson from the last time. Now that I know that only specific one of the hybrids actually are hybrids. Or I should say of the spirit Digimon or ancient warriors. Only specific ones are hybrids. Then I played the... Uh, the flame memory boost just to be able to give one of your Digimon security attack plus one since it doesn't specify that it has to be a red one. As long as you have like a red Digimon or a red tamer in play, you could play this and give any of your Digimon plus one. And then since I was playing green, I played Thunder Laser, which is, is if you have a Digimon with hybrid or ten warriors. And it's traits, so you can suspend on your opponent's Digimon for one cost. And then his its security is it just adds it to your hand. Which kind of sucks. <laughs> I wish it was like a uh, needle spray where it activates and then it adds it to your hand. I still think that that card's so busted that it's awesome. But yeah, that was it. Um, I believe I went... Like, two and three, maybe? At at the pre-release, or maybe it was three and two. Um, yeah, I, I didn't actually... Or actually, yeah, I did play these. But, again, <laughs> the lack of tamers, the lack of, uh, like, level threes, it kind of didn't really help. Because then I was having to, like, hard play, like, my level 4s and up from my hand. And then some of those cards, like I, like I said, they have those effects where they reduce cost, but it only works if you have a tamer in play. So it kind of sucks because then you'd have to 
uh, pay the full cost instead of getting the reduced cost. I kind of wish that they would have made them where it was just, as long as it has a hybrid underneath it, that it would be reduced cost. But, eh, what can we do? But yeah, that was that was it for that. Um, I mean, obviously, I I am I really enjoy going to the pre-releases. I mean, if you have a chance, and if you haven't gone to one, like if you have a chance to, I would definitely uh, suggest going, especially if you're new, because you don't actually need to have any cards in order to go to those. So, like, if you're brand new and trying to get into it. A uh, pre-release, I think, is a good idea to go to since uh, everybody is making a deck out of cards that they pull out of packs. So it's totally random. Um, you could get lucky like like I did my the first time where you could pull something, you could pull good stuff out of your packs and that's yours to keep. It isn't you in a... It's not like in some other places where when you do pre-releases or like draft formats like that where you have to like open a pack and you get one card. You open your packs and all those cards are yours. So like if you get good stuff then that's yours to keep. And then obviously uh, you, depending on the store I mean they could have other prizes that they give out like maybe you win store credit or packs or something uh for ours we just got the uh the pre-release promos which was the arrow vidramon zero and the uh all force vidramon zero and then the winner got the the uh the hollow uh winner pack of those but yeah but like i said it it's a fun thing Especially if you're new, I, I'm pretty sure people would help you out to uh, learn the game since, I mean, everybody's just p kind of playing with whatever they pulled. And again, you kind of have like an equal playing field on pre-releases. I mean, obviously there's luck involved, but it's a little bit more equal than like you having just started and maybe you could only buy like a certain number of packs to to try to build a deck and then versus like someone who buys like multiple boxes and has like h highest rarity like blinged out deck that they tried to build <laughs> so i think that's a little bit more fair just to kind of like get your get your feet sorry about that I'm getting called by a spam caller but yeah um like i was saying definitely a fun time i mean you get to meet new people you get to open packs everybody's kind of on an equal playing field so it's just a f like a fun environment to go play and yeah so I mean, by the time I put this out, the next adventure things should have probably been over. But we are getting closer t now, at the at least at the time of recording, towards um, the uh, the next set, New Hero. I still don't know when it's supposed to come out. I'm actually going to um, my locals later today after after I record this. So I'm probably going to ask when, if they have any news update about when New Hero is supposed to be coming out. Because I think it's supposed to come out next month, but then since um, BT7 got pushed back or whatever, I don't know if it's changed the timelines, so we'll have to see. But that's, <laughs> I guess that's enough of my little rambling on about uh pre-releases i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did hit that like if you're new to the channel please hit that subscribe if you appreciate it and as always this is saying tcg till next time thanks so much for watching